वेलकम बैक डियर फ्रेंड्स एट लिट ई सिटी यूट्यूब चैनल द वन स्टॉप डेस्टिनेशन फॉर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर डियर फ्रेंड्स दीज वीडियोज आर डिजाइंड स्पेशली कीपिंग इन माइंड एन टी ए नेट एग्जाम ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड आर प्रेजेंट सीरीज इज अबाउट द करेंट वीडियो इज अबाउट मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज taken from post modern writers and their works dear friends uh, in this particular video 25 questions advanced level questions have been framed from writers novelist and dramatist uh, whose works have uh, been considered important and from whose works and the writers from whom questions have been asked in previous years papers so we will start our session with the first question who is the writer of the novels like the house of sleep which is uk title a scarcity of love and the short story the bazooka they all deal chiefly with drug addiction there was in 70s and 80s many writers uh, who wrote novels uh, portraying the problem and we can say the world the underbelly of this particular pop culture hippie culture and this particular writer also wrote novels dealing with this particular uh, cultural phenomena is it anna cowan marvin peak malcolm lory or alfred dugan now an interesting fact i would like to add here is that all these four novelists have written at least one work which deal with the problem of drug addiction hallucination psychedelic uh, impressions but these particular novels the house of sleep scarcity of love the bazooka these all are written by anna cavan and she is basically famous for presenting or acclaimed for presenting the hallucinatory uh, experience of the drug addicts the next question is john witting is one of the earliest dramatists to use black humor and write dramas featuring absurd themes and characters we all know that the decades of 50s and 60s uh, they produced throughout the european continent produced dramas which were later considered to be part of the movement theater of the absurd but john witting we can say he was uh, an innovator he actually introduced such themes now which among these is not a play by john witting is it marching songs second option is the gates of summer third option is the devils and the last one is the waters of the moon all these are popular plays at their time not so popular uh, as they can become part of canon but they were very popular uh, i would especially like to mention the play the devils which is actually uh, based on elders huxley's novel the devils of london the play which is not by john witting is the water of the moon which is written by n c hunter another dramatist of this particular period who wrote on some absurd themes and introduced some uh, comic characters on the stage next question is a taste of honey published in 1958 is considered as one of the most influential works of the kitchen sink realism or kitchen sink drama who is the writer now kitchen sink drama is the name or title itself indicates deals about domesticity the mid, the middle class uh, their disenchantment with the uh, government or political um, institutions Uh, john osborne's look back in anger cons was considered to be a premier uh, work in this particular field but it was later uh, taken by arnold wesker and he uh, produced some works which were dealing about such problem related with the internal issues of uh, family middle class family now who is the writer of taste of honey was it bill norton uh second option is shila delany third option is arnold wesker and last option is brandon behan 
Now, Brendan Behan, he is an Irish uh, playwright, and uh, so is Shilak Delaney. And out of these four, three have contributed to this particular sub-genre of the modern, postmodern drama. The correct answer is Shilak Delaney, A Taste of Honey is a very moving story of a mother and daughter and their uh, the problem they face and how they try to cope up with all these pressures. Next question is, which of the following pairs of an absurdist play and its author is not correctly matched? So on one side, left side, you will see the list of absurdist play and the, on the right side, you will see the name of the writers. So our options are, Time of the Locusts and the playwright is Ezio de Arico. Second is The Balcony and the, uh, the, the name of uh, writer is Jean Zenit. No Exit, Albert Camus, A Resounding Tinkle and F. Simpson. Now we, when uh, the term absurdist play comes, the two or three major writers come to our mind uh, obviously, there are very popular writers like Samuel Beckett and uh, Ianesco, Ianesco. But I have picked these writers because uh, you must cover all writers related with this particular genre. The correct option for this one is No Exit, which is not written by Albert Camus, but rather by Jean-Paul Sartre. He, this is his famous play, No Exit a particular existentialist and absurdist drama. The next question is, which novel features the name of the protagonist of which novel, Joe Lunn, a science teacher who aspires to be a novelist and who is an early example, a prototype of comic anti-hero which were later popularized by <coughs> writer like Kingsley Amis. So our options are scenes from provincial life. Second option is a kind of loving. Third option is Seville. And third option is, the last option is Billy Liar. Now all these works, they basically deal with this uh, comic anti-hero type. Comic anti-hero is that protagonist who... Um, not with the, notwithstanding the convention of a typical hero, he or she generally fails in all their missions of the life. They are but of uh, jokes played on them. And by their failures, they create an image of an anti-hero. So the correct answer is scene of provincial life, which is written by William Cooper. By inspired by the success of this particular novel, he later wrote Scenes from Married Life, which is kind of a sequel. A Kind of Loving is uh, written by Stanley Bastow. Several is a very popular work by David Story. And Billy Liar is another popular work by Keith Waterhouse. The next question, dear friend, is which of the following pairs of the protagonist of a angry and angry young man novel and the work is not correct now the two columns will display a particular novel and the work uh, name of the protagonist sorry and the work so name of protagonist is john lewis and the novel in which he features is that uncertain feeling name of protagonist charles lumley hurry on down Joe Lampton, Room at the Top, and Arthur Seaton, Life at the Top. Out of these four, you have to identify that particular combination which is incorrect. And uh, an angry young man, like a comic anti-hero, it is a shoot out of that particular sub-genre. Angry young man was a prototype, a character who was furious because he or she is not getting the opportunity which were promised after the war. Uh, with, uh, he is totally disillusioned and uh, he is abusing all the institutes of the society. The correct answer, dear friend, is Arthur Seaton, 
uh, is not the protagonist of life at the top, but rather Saturday Night and Saturday Morning, a very popular work by Alan Silly too. So this is the correct answer. Which of the William Golding's novels can be called an ironic spin-off of um, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe? We all know the importance of Robinson Crusoe. It is considered to be one of the most influential work which has later uh, inspired so many writers and there have been sequels or we can say prequels and there are also spin-offs, critiques of this particular novel. This novel also deals with the similar theme of a, a survivor and how he basically deals with the situation. Is it the inheritors? The second option is the paper man. Third option is Pincher Martin. And the last option is the scorpion god. William Golding, a Nobel Prize winner writer, he has always raised question about the core values of humanity. And this novel also does the same. The correct answer is Pincher Martin in which uh, this particular eponymous hero, Pincher Martin, he is left stranded uh, at sea and like Robinson Crusoe, he tries to survive the harsh condition, but it is not about the heroic uh, quality of a British, but rather the meanness of humanity. In which of the Muriel Sparks novel, several elderly friends receive anonymous telephone calls with a single message, remember you must die. It's a very scary kind of opening with all these elder people, they gather, they uh, have fun and uh, suddenly one by one they receive this message and this particular taut line is rather revealed. Uh, later reveal their inner insecurities, their, we can say, lies, and all these things are revealed gradually. The first option for it is loitering with intent. Second option is the girls of slender means. Third one is the comforters. And the last option is memento mori, which is a Latin phrase. Now, dear friends, the correct answer, if you can guess by the title, is Memento Mori. And it is, uh, this particular novel is considered to be one of the greatest achievement by Muriel Spark. Which among the following work by Angus Wilson. Wilson is not a novel. Angus Wilson, the British writer, columnist, essayist, short story writer, known for his very pinpointed prose writing, has written comic satirical works. Now, his famous, all these are quite famous works by Angus Wilson, Hamlock and After, The Middle Age of Mrs. Elliot, Such Darling Dodos, and Anglo-Saxon Attitudes. Out of these, these all these four works are by Angus Wilson, but one among these is not a novel, but rather a collection of a story, Such Darling Daughters. It is his collection of stories, while other three are novels. The Enderby series, which is a quartet of comic satirical novels by Anthony Burgess, and now uh, you have to identify the profession of the protagonist of these four novels, Mr. Enderby. Uh, Mr. Enderby is once again a very popular character and you have to identify whether he is a spy, an archaeologist, a librarian or a professional poet. Dear friends, if you have gone through, you know it's a rather an easy question. He, him, as he himself confesses, is a professional poet and Burgess has written four novels on this particular series. Our next question is, which play by Edward Bond is a farce on British customs featuring a coup against Queen Victoria, causing it to be banned by Lord Chamberlain? A very interesting information I would like to share here is that this is the last play which was banned by Lord Chamberlain. Uh, uh, Edward Bond is known for his, uh, we can say, 
unconventional and iconoclastic ways uh, of presenting a drama. Most of his drama are presented for personal performance and then later they were uh, taken up by academics. Now this particular play in which uh, he presents a plot uh, of assassination Queen, uh, against Queen Victoria. There are, it, the play also features a mock caricature of uh, Florence Nightingale. The options are The Pope's Wedding, Saved, The Fool or Early Morning. And the correct answer for it, dear friend, is early morning. And it was very controversial at that time. Uh, no British authority was uh, able to digest the bitter farce uh, used in it. What is the central theme of Cards of Identity, which is a critical acclaimed novel by Nigel Dennis? First option is a satire on psychology and social class. Second is a satire on colonialism. Third option is a satire on feminist identity. And the last option is a satire on absurdist literature. Nigel Dennis is known uh, for writing satirical novel. Most of his novels are satires and this particular cards of identity in which uh, once again there is a group of people uh, they are they all are given cards in which their new identity is ascribed. This play the actually it is a satire on the psychology social class and even on religion and it is a very popular work also. Who is the author of controversial though critically acclaimed novels like Hackenfeller's Ape, The Snowball and non-fiction works like Mozart the Dramatist, 50 works of English and American literature we could do without. This particular book, 50 works of English and American literature we could do without, written in collaboration. It become, it become a cause of controversy because it included works like Hamlet, uh, which the writer considered to be uh, not such a literary um, gem. The options are Bridget Bruffy, second is Patricia Waugh, third option is Doris Lessing, and the last option is Angela Carter. All these have, apart from writing novels, have contributed to the critical uh, survey of literature of the time. But this particular uh, writer, uh, writer of novels like Heckenfeller's Ape, which is a satire, is Bridget Brophy. Uh, she has written very acclaimed work, well versed work, uh, uh, and once again, her works, like typical postmodern spirit, they all are satires. The Balkan Trilogy by Olivia Manning, describing the marriage of Harriet and Guy Pringle. When they live and work in Romania, then in Greece, and then uh, on the eve of World War II moving to England is one of the best fictional record of the war. Which among these is not a part of this trilogy? Olivia Manning has written two trilogy. One is Balkan and the other one is Levant trilogy. So the options are The Great Fortune, The Spoiled City, Friends and Heroes and The Danger Tree. Out of these four, the danger tree is not part of Balkan trilogy. It is part of the second trilogy by her, the Levant trilogy. So uh, in both these trilogies, she has presented her own experiences of war and it is considered to be one of the best description of wartime England. Which of the following novels has Afghanistan as its setting and background? First option is Frank Tuhoy's The Animal Game, Francis King's The Fire Walkers, Lawrence Durrell's Prospero's Cell, and Robert J Robin Jenkins' Dust on the Paw. An interesting point uh, about these novels is that all these novels have foreign locations, exotic location, but the one which is which has Afghanistan as its background is. Robin Jenkins' Dust on the Paw. Frank Tio's uh, The Animal Game is basically uh, set in Brazil. 
and the fire walkers is set in greece prospero's cell is set in rhodes while robin jenkins dust on the pa is set in afghanistan which play of peter sheffer is a historical play about the spanish conquest of the inca civilization of peru a very popular dramatist playwright of later 70s and 80s this particular play uh, deals about the colonization of peru by spanish conquistor the first option is black comedy second one is equus third one is the royal hunt of the sun and the last one is amadeus now dear friends the correct answer is the royal hunt of the sun equus is about a boy fascinated with the horses and amadeus is obviously about mozart which dramatist wrote incisive critiques of british institutions in racing demon about the church of england murmuring judges about the legal profession the absence of war about politicians so all these three dramas uh, they criticize three major is institutes of uh, england is it alan bennett second is david hare third option is brian friel and the last option is and jellico the correct option is david hare who has become a leading voice a leading dramatist of britain always writing about some important aspects of society and their lacunas a day in the death of joe ag is a controversial black comedy about two parents caring for their 10 year old girl josephine and is based on author's experience of having a disabled child who is the author peter nichols david story peter shaffer or david mercer dear friend this particular novel becomes controversial because of the treatment of a disabled child how both parents their life their marriage has completely exhausted uh, uh, taking care of this particular child and now they seems to be totally indifferent to her suffering the right answer is peter nichols and this work is considered to be a landmark work in disability disability literature which among these is a booker prize winner novel by david story that features the epical coming of the age story of a minor's son and his emotional alienation with the world he grows up in the boy gradually becomes totally disenchanted with the world this sporting life it is one of the most popular work by david story who was also a baseball player and this novel is based on this particular aspect of his life pasmore it was also shortlisted for booker prize a prodigal child or seville the correct answer is seville who won the booker prize in 1976 and which is about coming of the age story of a boy a minor son uh, and how he cope up copes up with the world and later become totally disenchanted with it Alan Ickbonds The Norman Conquests is a series of three interconnecting plays which of these is not a part of this series Round and Round the Garden Living Together Table Manners Absurd Person Singular all these four plays are by Alan Ickbond who is considered to be the most unique dramatic voice of the contemporary generation and these three plays the norman conquest they all have similar set of characters and different parts of a house as its setting the correct answer is absurd person singular it is not the part of these three play sequence which include tab table manners living together and round and round the garden which of carol churchill's play is set in a british african colony in victorian times and offers a radical and daring reassessment of sex race and gender carol churchill is known for her radical presentation of feminist issues in her plays like including all female cast this is one of the ploy is it top girls it is considered to be her most popular and critically acclaimed work cloud 9 serious money or far away 
and the correct answer is cloud 9 which was considered to be a very very important play of its time the arcade trilogy is a brilliant mix of fiction and autobiography about a small boy through his first world war childhood then into the army and frontline service in the second world war who is the author jennifer johnston john banville william trevor or jocelyn brook now the arcade trilogy include three novels about fascination of this particular boy with the arcades and with the army and the correct answer is jocelyn brook and the three novels are the military arcades a mine of serpents and the goose cathedral who is the acclaim, who is the writer of acclaimed works of contemporary feminist fiction like the fat women's joke the life and loves of ashi devil both these plays are very popular because they raise those issues related with feminism which are generally ignored is it jennifer johnston barbara pym fay weldon or beryl banbridge the correct answer is fay weldon who always tries to raise issues which are generally ignored by most of the feminists the man on a donkey by h f m prescott is a widely acclaimed historical novel which particular era or event it chronicles dissolution of the monasteries by henry 8th attempt to assassinate queen elizabeth norman conquest or execution of sir thomas more dear friends h f m prescott was uh, we can say an innovator of uh, postmodernist fiction she wrote when uh, novels were based on a uh, modernist theme but she basically uh, tried to explore historical themes in her novels it is dissolution of the monasteries by henry 8th which makes the theme of her very famous novel the man on a donkey which play of john arden is set in the borders region of scotland in 1530s and written in lowland scottish vernacular now john arden is known for mixing songs and ballads and other folk elements into his plays so is the case with this play our options are sergeant musgraves dance left handed liberty armstrong's last good night and the non stop connolly cycle the correct answer for this question is armstrong's last good night with this we come to the end of our exhilarating session of these question i hope you get some names which you have either skipped or have not yet read go with the go after them read about them prepare these works also because you will find some question in your exams take care dear friends thank you